6.30 a.m. in Llanberis, North Wales. 1,158 triathletes march down to the lake for the start of the Half Ironman UK Triathlon. It's the only official Ironman event in the UK and is licensed by the World Triathlon Corporation. The distances involved are exactly half that of a full Ironman course. 1.2 miles of swimming, 56 miles of cycling, and concluding with a 13.1 mile run. The Half Ironman UK Triathlon is a prestigious event in the triathlon world. The winners of each age category will qualify for the Ironman World Championships in Hawaii 2003. In Llanberis, most interest is focused on the elite men's and women's categories. And amongst those hoping to be on the plane to Hawaii next year is the pick of the Welsh triathletes here, Richard Jones. I've been racing professionally for five years and that's meant just having one day off a week and the six other days has been f training three times a day, sometimes four times a day. And in the rare moments he's not training, Jones's work for the Sports Council of Wales keeps him close to the sport. With youth and juniors, my, my role is to help and support and coordinate races, a triathlon series and provide opportunities for, for children and youngsters to get involved in, in our sport. Not only helping to ensure a steady stream of young triathletes for the future, Jones is no average racer himself. He was ranked fourth in the European Cup Series last year and won a home nation's triathlon in Ireland earlier this year. But the competition at the Half Ironman UK Triathlon will be formidable. The prize purse on offer is the biggest ever in a British race. Many of the world's best triathletes are homing in on Llanberis for the event. Uh, it's a very, very good field somewhat with uh, Hawaii winner, world champion Luke Van Leder from Belgium. We also have last year's winner Richard Allen and a gaggle of other British competitors also from overseas, a strong gym contingent. So there's an international flavour to Llanberis the day before the race and one international sporting superstar in Luke van Leerde of Belgium. Yeah, I've been to Hawaii a couple of times, I've won it twice, I've uh, still hold the course record in Hawaii, still hold the world record that I did in Germany. So victory here must be a foregone conclusion for the Ironman world champion. Courses like here for, for, uh, for Sunday, it's, uh, it's a really tough course and you really have to divide your energy throughout the whole, the whole race. Uh, the bike is really tough, especially the run with, uh, with the hill, it's, it's a really hard course. He may be the favourite, but after the swim, Van Leerde will have some catching up to do over the rest of the four hours of racing. Englishman Richard Stannard is the best swimmer here and will without doubt be in front when the race moves on to dry land. I mean, I'm likely to get something, I hope, you never know, but uh, I'm hoping to get sort of 30 seconds to a minute, but I'm also a reasonable biker, uh, and so I would hope to then extend that lead on the bike, or at least maintain that lead on the bike for the run. No shortage of young guns for the world champion to keep a watch out for then. This is a job for me. I'm a full-time triathlete, so uh, eventually I've got to eat some food and, and pay my rent. So that's one thing that helps keep me going. But at the end of the day, um, I'm here. I'm a racer. I, I like racing. Um, I, I, I haven't raced Iron Man the full distance, and to me, that's more a battle of survival than a race. Although I think some, you know, some of the athletes may argue, but the racing I'm doing is pure racing at Olympic distance level. You've got guys around you the whole way, and that's what I like racing. So when it comes to it, if there's people around me on the run, I will find it from somewhere to race them because that's what I enjoy. For me, it's the most important thing is what happens within, between the years. That's the most important thing. So there you win or you lose races. Uh, you can do all the training you want. Uh, you can eat whatever you need to eat during the race, before the race. It, that's not going to ensure you winning the race. It's uh, being smart the day of the race and that's going to help you win the race. With last year's winner Richard Allen also here to prove himself again and a host of foreign competitors looking to snatch the prize money and tickets to Hawaii, what chances there of some home nation success tomorrow? If you have to keep it steady, strong but steady, then uh, I should figure somewhere. Unlikely to figure anywhere but first tomorrow, Germany's Nina Kraft won Ironman South Africa and Ironman Roth in 2001 before coming in third at the World Championships in Hawaii. You know, you cannot say before the race you win it, so you see in the race what, what's happening. But just as in the men's race, there are British athletes out to challenge the superstar from abroad. The foremost of these is Annie Emerson, who has no illusions about the size of the task and the identity of her rival. Um, Nina Kraft. 
definitely my main contender. Unfortunately, Nina beat me a couple of weeks ago in a half Ironman over in Denmark. But that said, this is a completely different bike course and my strengths definitely the hills. And Denmark was very flat and I think that's more her strength. So I'm hoping that I'm not going to lose the time that I did on the bike a couple of weeks ago to her. But, you know, obviously she's, she's very strong, but I'm out to beat her. So... With rain churning up the waters of Lake Padan, it's time for the 1158 athletes to focus on the 1.2 mile swim. The race will start in two waves with half of the field, including the elite and pro athletes, starting at 6.45, the rest 15 minutes later. Time for Richard Stannard to get to work and make good his prediction of leading after the swim. And sure enough, Stannard has all the rest in his wake. And shortly before the halfway point, a quick look back reveals Van Leerde already 50 metres adrift. The world champion won't have everything his own way today. But neither will the race leader, Richard Stannard. Richard Allen, last year's winner, is right on the leader's toes, beating expectations and having the swim of his career. These two are pulling away all the time as the elite athletes turn and head back towards the transition. For the Welsh hope, Richard Jones, it's been a disappointing start to the race. Swim, the water temperature wasn't that cold compared to last year, apparently. Had a terrible swim, came out to swim three minutes down on the leaders, which is a bad thing because you're not in that, that front pack. Finishing the swim in 22 minutes and 28 seconds, Stannard doesn't have the advantage he'd hoped for. With Richard Allen chasing him to the transition, Stannard will have to try again on dry land. For Allen, it's been a better start to the defense of his half Ironman UK triathlon title than anyone expected. Luke van Leerde is fifth out of the water, 37 seconds down on Stannard and Allen. With a swim time of 25 minutes and 43 seconds, Beth Thompson of New Zealand leads the women out of the water. But race favourite Nina Kraft is just six seconds behind. Annie Emerson's hopes of beating Nina Kraft have taken an early blow. She's two and a half minutes behind the leaders. Things get even better for Richard Allen. After a fast transition, he's overtaken Stannard and is first away. <laughs> Nina Kraft is still second as she begins the next task of 56 miles of cycling. For the race organizers, the equally awesome task of getting over 1,100 triathletes to the right bikes and the right kit bags as quick as possible. <laughs> Leaving Van Beres for the open countryside, it's Richard Allen in first place. But Richard Stannard is still determined to take the lead he wanted after the swim and is catching. And it's not long before Stannard has worked his way into the lead, with Richard Allen following. The two leaders have extended their lead from 30 seconds leaving the swim to almost two minutes after an hour of the race. Richard Stannard knows it's a risky strategy, but it's his best chance of staying ahead on his weakest discipline, the run. I'm just going to go from the gun, go as hard as I can, and if I blow up or I can't, you know, I have trouble uh, on the run, then so be it. But I'm here to, to ride the 90 kilometres very hard and hopefully stay away. But there's some very strong athletes here. Um, Luke Van Leerd, uh, Ironman champion, Ironman world champion, and has a you know amazing pedigree. So if I do stay away from him, I'll be very happy. Um, but realistically, only a few, I, I want to leave it so only a few people are in contention after the, the bike section on the very hard run. At the moment, only Richard Allen remains in contention, but there are three hours to go, and it's all as expected for Luke van Leerde. 
I expect uh, Richard Standard being a little bit more in front because he's a very good swimmer. Uh, on the bike, I'm just gonna s stick with him and relax and uh, try to follow them uh, at a normal pace. I'm not gonna try to get away on the bike because I know I'm stronger on the run. He'll probably have to prove it too. At Beth Gellert, Van Leerder is in third place, more than two minutes behind Stannard and Allen. Tenth out of the water, Richard Jones has improved to fifth place by the time he reaches Beth Gellert, using the same patient tactics as Van Leerder. Hopefully be there near the front pack, and then the, the bike keep it steady, because I think with the condition for tomorrow, going off too hard, then you're gonna, it's going to cause problems further on later on in the race. Second place, Richard Allen is one of those who started fast. He won the race last year, of course, but now the competition is a lot more fierce. I think at the top level, it's very much mental. Um, you know, the top athletes are very, very close, um, and it will come down to you know just a, a few minutes or a few seconds at the end. So it's going to be a, you know a psychological battle, and uh, you know whether you can break your opposition during the race. At the toughest hill on the course, climbing to a height of 277 metres, most of the opposition are behind, but not yet broken for Allen and Stannard. Only time will tell whether aggression or patience will prove the more effective. With the superstar not leading in the men's race, the same's happening amongst the women, with Beth Thompson of New Zealand leading Lena Kraft. It's the toughest bike course in any Ironman race, and anything could happen as they battle through the hills of Snowdonia. It's a gruelling bike ride. I mean, most rides um, in races that you do, you either have like one hill or two hills, and you know where they are, so you're expecting them, you sort of rest up, attack the hill, and that's it, it's over and done with. But this kind of course, it's uh, up and down, you're always in and out of the saddle, and I mean, it was a lot colder as well um, than what I expected, so that also played a part, and um, being wet as well, we had to be careful on the corners. Despite these problems, after 20 miles, Thompson leads Kraft by over a minute. For third-placed Annie Emerson, it's been a disappointing race so far. Four minutes down on the leader, Emerson's dream of taking revenge on Kraft seems to be fading away. I just found the course really gruelling today. I don't think it was so much the weather conditions. It was just kind of quite relentless. There wasn't really one particular downhill or I mean, there was a flat bit along the top, but you know, it was just a constant grind, which made it very, very tough. It's tough on men's leader Richard Stannard too, but we'll never know whether his plan of putting the opposition to the sword would have worked. At Kapelkirik, he suffers a puncture, and the time lost means his hopes of a podium position have disappeared. They're over halfway around the bike course, and Stannard's misfortune leaves last year's winner Richard Allen all alone, more than two minutes in the lead. But Allen is beginning to lose time to the chasing athletes. Welchman Richard Jones has moved up from 10th to 2nd in the course of the bike ride felt very very good on the bike didn't rush it at the first five miles but then gradually got into a good good pace caught each athlete each cyclist caught them dropped them forged ahead but as he moves into second place there's one athlete that Jones can't forge ahead of Stephen Sheldrake of New Zealand as Jones and Sheldrake enjoy the psychological advantage of riding together, it's tougher for leader Richard Allen, who now has to do all the work on his own. Approaching the 40-mile point, it's time to see who can find the most strength for the race back to the transition. Your mind tends to wander and you go through good patches and you go through bad patches and you just got to keep reminding yourself on the bad patches that you are going to have a good patch and, and to keep eating it. Sort of the day like today, it's cold, you probably don't drink as much, but you're still you know, losing fluids, so you've got to keep reminding yourself to eat and drink and, and then keep doing it and doing it. Things are getting bad for Richard Allen. He's lost his drinks and gels on the bumpy road and 10 miles from the end is losing power fast. And then we could see Richard Allen sort of about a minute up the road at about 60, 70 k and um, he was obviously having a hard day. And we managed to catch him with about 10 to go. Jones passes Allen, but it's Sheldrake in the lead, determined to be first into the run. And I sort of tried to ride hard home because I knew Richard was a quicker runner than I was. I sort of try to sting his legs a little bit.
the plan works and Sheldrake is first back to the transition to the run, which is something of a surprise for the spectators, as it is to see Richard Jones in second with the fastest cycle time of 2 hours 21 minutes and 48 seconds. The Welshman is 20 seconds behind as they prepare to run the 13.1 mile out and back course. Richard Allen is still in contention in third place, but the story takes another twist as the lead changes in the transition and the wrong man emerges first. Looking at the transition, 20 seconds down on Stephen Sheldrake from New Zealand, but I had a good transition. Came out of the sweat, I came out of the transition 20 seconds up. I think it was nerves coming off the bike because there was a pack behind me of 10 who seemed to be drafting but I thought they were going to run me down but I, I held my head, kept it strong, kept a good pace, kept plugging away. And for the locals in the crowd it's a glorious sight to see a Welshman in the lead. But there's a long way to go and any one of the chasing pack could still catch Richard Jones. Near the back of the group, world champion Luke van Leerde will need a world-class run to take the victory expected of him. The first woman to the transition is Beth Thompson. Starting the run four minutes ahead of Nina Kraft, Thompson will need every second of this advantage to stay ahead of the strong-running German, but she's out of the transition before the race favourite comes in. The climb to the halfway point of the run takes the athletes up 142 metres in just one and a half miles. This one in six climb is a harsh test for Jones and Sheldrake, but it suits the Welshman, who's extending his lead. With it being six miles uphill and six miles straight back down, I thought, well, if I can get to the halfway mark before anybody else, then I have a good chance of winning. Just because of my, my legs, my leg length, my strides, then it'd be very difficult to run as quick as I can down hills. With six and a half miles to the finish, Sheldrake now has to see if he can prove the race leader wrong. Richard Allen is struggling on the descent and won't retain his title. And as he goes down, the women's leader, Beth Thompson, goes up, with victory far from safe yet. Annie Emerson is seven minutes behind starting the run, but is the strongest runner here, stronger than most of the pro men. As I came into transition, I saw Nina Kraft running out and I thought, oh, that's good because I know she's a strong biker and swimmer, so to be quite close made me feel good. Um, I didn't realise until I sort of got out onto the run how far Beth was up the road. I knew the run was really going to be tough, so I just thought, well, let's hold it together to the turnaround and if I'm still in the lead, then I'll just give it everything that, that I've got for nothing to lose. So I did that and I managed to hold off um, Nina and Annie, who I knew would be coming through the pack at quite a rapid pace. Kraft is second and gaining on the leader. Emerson is third and gaining on both of them as she approaches the turnaround. <laughs> Running is my real strength and I thought if, she, if I've got her in my sights at the top and then I've got a chance and, I, and she was so close by the top that um, I felt pretty confident turning around that um, that I catch her. So I got to the turnaround and then got my little legs going as fast as I'd go on the downhill. <laughs> Not only the little legs of Beth Thompson, but also the huge legs of Richard Jones are struggling to make the finish line now. My legs were very, very tired having run down six miles down a hill. You know, your quads are aching, your, your hamstrings, your calves. You think all your muscles, you pull all your muscles in your legs, but as soon as you've seen a finish line, then that seems to disappear. I just feel elation and, and happiness and joy and all those kind of feelings all, all in one. And once I knew what, I felt as if I was going to win. It was just such a good feeling. You can't explain it unless, unless you experience it yourself. Just an overwhelming experience. In a time of four hours, four minutes and 33 seconds, they couldn't be a more popular winner for the people of Flanberis. Richard Jones has beaten his own expectations to win the race, nearly three minutes ahead of Stephen Sheldrake at the end. Australian Tom Rickards comes through on the run to take third. For Richard Allen, disappointment after a brave performance on the bike and in the swim, he finishes seventh. 
For the world champion Luke Van Leerde, there's equal disappointment. He drops out on the run and must hope for better in Hawaii later this year. But there are still scores to settle amongst the women, and with four miles to go, Beth Thompson is finally overtaken by Nina Kraft. But this doesn't give Kraft the lead. Annie Emerson has overtaken both and is 50 metres ahead on the road. Emerson has made up an incredible seven minutes in just nine miles. As you take the lead, I think you, sometimes you get that doubt, oh my God, I've still got kind of four miles to go. You know, I hope I don't kind of like suddenly crash and burn, hit the wall or whatever. And, um, and as I got kind of five minutes down the road, I had a quick glance over my shoulder and realised that I'd, I'd dropped them, I'd left them. And, uh, and that kind of, I started being able to really enjoy the race. But I, I'd have to say it was probably the last 20 minutes that I enjoyed of the race out of four and a half hours. So. <laughs> but I mean, it was a fabulous day. Yeah. To come down into town and think, I've got this one, it was just an absolutely wonderful feeling. Finishing in four hours, 23 minutes and 46 seconds, Emerson's run time is faster than all of the men, except for third place Tom Rickards. For Richard Stannard, whose puncture consigned him to an eventual 10th place, there's as much delight in seeing Emerson win as if he'd won the men's race himself. How do you feel right now? I'm just really emotional because I, like, I had such a hard time on the bike today and I, I never thought I could turn it around and win, so it's amazing. Absolutely fantastic, the happiest person here. <laughs> Thank you. Nina Kraft is second, two minutes and two seconds later than Emerson. And in third place, Beth Thompson, not too disappointed after having led the race until the last gasp. After all, for most people here, it's the taking part that counts. I think it's just an individual's inner drive. I mean, like everyone out there, whether they were last or first or whatever place or whatever age group, it's just a desire and a challenge. And it's that desire which keeps you going and the satisfaction that they know that they're going to get when they actually cross the line. So you just keep going <laughs> until you do cross the line because it is worthwhile and it is satisfying. Out of 1,158 athletes who started the race, 1,026 make the finish line, and many of them will be back next year when the Half Ironman UK Triathlon moves on to a new course in Dorset in 2003.